I felt like I was hitting um, certain mix-ups the way that I wanted to. Like, I didn't feel like I was getting, like, completely outplayed in a lot of instances. I felt like I could, I could fight back, and I, I had, like, some pretty solid, like, punishes also. Nice. Um, edge, like, like, pretty much everything all around felt good. Like, I'm not upset with how I played at all, despite the fact that I lost. Like, I just felt like I played it pretty decent. You know, like, what I kind of want to aim for more often than not. Yeah, like, you played well, you played better. But, like, you you still played well, so... I feel like those losses are the ones that are easier for us to, like, just kind of walk away from, like, with a po like positively. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just... You know, they played a good game, we played a good game, they played a better game, but we can get them the next time. Because now, because we both played well, we can see where our, like, opportunities are, we can see what we need to do. Like, I, that's the vibe I always get. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. So, I guess the one question I would have here is, um, like, if we're, how do you see today being useful? Like, we could definitely take a look at those games versus Abe. Um, I know that we've also talked about, like, mentality, so I definitely want to know about what's going on there. Yeah, just, what do you, what do you have in mind? Ah, uh, well, you so you want to know what's going on with the mentality stuff. I mean, we might as well, like, just dive into that. Sure. So, We've talked, at, we, like, we've talked um, outside of the session a little bit about different approaches, because this stuff is, this is a tough one. Um, right. What have you, have you tried anything? Has, is anything working? Just, yeah. Yeah, so I tried the staying on the Angel platform stuff. Like, I was just doing that in just normal friendlies. Like, I didn't even really do it in ranked much at first, because I just wanted to... Like, wh how do I feel when I force myself to just stay on the Angel platform until I, like, fall from it, you know? Mm -hmm. And, like, it kind of works, but, like, after a while I was just getting kind of annoyed that, like, I'm making myself wait on the Angel platform when I just want to get back. Like, it's, like, a test of patience because it's, like it's a good way to like remind myself and keep myself kind of grounded in the game if i'm like forcing myself to do it pretty much every single stock but at the same time after a while i just got tired of making myself wait and eventually i just started to just kind of immediately drop down but i do now have an ingrained habit where i'm much more conscientious of like the fact that my stock was just taken and that i'm on the angel platform so i will still Make, take like a little mental like step to just acknowledge maybe where I'm at or even just be like okay I'm looking at my opponent I'm gonna recenter myself go you know like then do it like I don't have to wait the full five seconds yeah. to go if I, if I don't feel like I need to but I think that's been productive I think that's been a better use of thinking about the angel platform so Agreed. That's something. And I think that the modifications that you're making to our original idea make a perfect sense. Because usually with, um, I think that like, I think that the original idea of just waiting it out, that is too extreme. Absolutely. 100% right on that. But at the same time, we have to like kind of, I think it's good to kind of like overshoot it and then like rein it in sometimes so that we get kind of like dive head first into the new idea. And then we kind of figure out how we have to like make it our own and like sh change it so it suits our needs um i think that there are going to be situations where it actually makes zero sense whatsoever to wait on the angel platform because of the constraints of the situation like i'm thinking like a slow recovery if like we trade stocks off stage and the opponent's still alive um if we're against like samus or something and she like you know she co comes off stage to try to like nair us or something she gets uh yeah up air traded and she has to do an awkward recovery if we die like we die anyway but like if we die and we're waiting on the angel platform, we might lose the chance to stomp her or fair her or whatever when she's coming up. Um, so something like that, yeah, absolutely, like, don't wait there. Um, and if you're just feeling good, like, I don't see why we necessarily have to take ourselves out of, like, our flow state. Um, but I think what you're getting, what the thing that I'm really, I find really encouraging is you're picking up on when we're, when we're not in our flow state and when we're in the like when we're when we're fixating on something and then we need to like recenter ourselves that's where it's really useful that's where the angel platform waiting and the reset is like super super clutch yeah 
also um not just in like because i went to a tournament last friday but like there and then also like recently like today i've been playing a bunch and i've been getting like very frustrated when playing and i find that like just when i'm at this point of frustration on the angel platform i'm just i just take like a big forced like deep breath and just like because i'm like i'm gonna make myself at least breathe for a moment before i move and continue you know it feels like it sometimes helps sometimes it feels like it does nothing but i don't know i i guess at least i'm doing the habit which is something yeah you're doing something about if you know what we haven't figured out the full like exactly what we need to do like the full process but you're right we are doing something about the problem and that feels good and sometimes that's enough so do you have any can you tell me anything about the times where it doesn't work um i just get very headstrong about a very particular like just simply wanting to win like my inner desire to just beat people that i want to beat not because like oh i don't want to lose to them but like i just really wanted to win and then like things not quite working out or me not getting the hits that i need or me messing up some tech skill and it just kind of falls apart but like hey i'd rather think that way and get like angry about it afterwards than like mentally give up halfway through because it's just not going my way which has been had been a habit of mine for like too darn long oh okay so when did that change like when would you say that changed um I don't know if for for tournaments specifically it it doesn't make uh, it doesn't make sense to me like why all of a sudden I'm like caring way more about wanting to win and and like it's just changed like I maybe because recent well no that was before our local PR came out um and I got seventh on that which is cool because I was ninth oh, congrats, before so oh, I congratulations went, yeah you went up that's yeah. sick yeah, so that felt re that felt validating for sure, and it makes me kind. Of, it definitely want to makes me keep going. I'm, I just mean like in tournament, I've I've been trying to channel more of my feelings of frustration into just performing a little bit better. Like that's it's still really hard to do, but at least like I want to do that. Like in the moment when it's happening, instead of me just being like. Well, I'm playing like garbage. I'm just mentally giving up here, you know. Mm -hmm. And I like I don't know what caused me to. I guess just like I kind of snapped out of it um, Wednesday evening or Thursday, and just wanted to play a lot of melee again, and you know, went like grinded melee pretty heavily for like a few days, and then had a slump, and then now I'm playing it again today, and. Seems to be kind of very back and forth, but, like, the motivation's definitely there. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you said you went to a weekly on Friday? Mm-hmm. How'd that go? Bi-weekly. But, um, so, um, I really, I don't really care much to talk about, like, who I beat, because it's just the typical, like, 2-2 experience where you don't, um, you, you beat someone basically with your eyes closed. Mm -hmm. so there's no point in really talking about that but uh winners round two i played are one of the newly pr'd players um and he's a pretty good fox he plays on box and i felt like game one was actually pretty close it went to last stock um i even got like a pretty nice chain grab on him to like pretty high percent and did a pretty wicked I, I did like an up throw and he like landed on the platform in such a way where when i dared him it popped him up into like the ceiling and killed him off the top and i don't think either of us were expecting that to happen and it was it was funny because it got a reaction out of him um oh, sick. so that was cool so I, I felt like i could win that first game but i didn't he he outplayed me in some spots so i was like okay that's fine i'm gonna go um to dreamland because he's like i'm gonna ban yoshi so i'm like all right let's try let's try dreamland dreamland unfortunately went very poorly because i didn't know how to play around with the extra space that um dreamland allows uh 
and I ended up getting three stocks, and I was pretty disappointed about like doing worse on my counter pick than I did game one. So that was a bit disappointing. Um, then in losers, uh, I played some Marth player, beat him, and then I play a Falco player who actually got upset round one or two or something by a Sheik. Mm. So I had to play this guy early in losers, and um, both game one and two felt extremely winnable. Uh, I, I felt very confident um, about, especially game one, because I had like the lead almost the entire time up until I dropped an edge guard when he was at like two stock. We were both at two stocks. He was at like a hundred plus percent, and uh-huh. he did like a side beyond the stage. I didn't cover it quite well, and then he like killed me. F- he reversaled me, killed me for it, and then I was so annoyed at that that I basically just ran at him for the next stock, and he just like zero to death me. So two stocked me with high percent um, that first game, and I was like upset because I like felt like I had that game and then like threw it away. So then I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to go to Dreamland because of what happened in that Fox set where I just did worse. So I'm going to try Fountain. Fountain did end up working better because it did go to last stock there, but I don't think I maintained the lead the entire time. And I don't know. I just, I know like the entire time I just like really, really wanted to win. I wanted to progress further in the bracket than just go two and two. Uh, But that didn't happen. So. I got pretty frustrated and just kind of left the venue after getting eliminated. Hmm. So there's a few things that I want to pick, that we can definitely pick at there. Um, I, I going to two is frustrating. Like I get it, uh, but like it sounds weird, but like I actually kind of like it when I get. This might sound a little strange, but I actually kind of like it when I get like frustrated or like nervous or some other sign that I care about the outcome of the match when I play a mm-hmm. tournament. Because, like, I'd much rather care than not, you know? Yeah. But I think that there's also such a thing as, like, allowing how much we care about the ma- the match outcome to become a distraction. So what I mean by that is, like, so let's talk about, like, you brought up something interesting there with the Falco set, right? Mm-hmm. And... I feel like you know what I'm going to say, but I'm going to do it anyway. The sh- yeah, go ahead. The should have won, or should have had that stock. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, was it like a, was it an absolute guaranteed kill? It was an edgeguard situation. It was basically a win condition. I, like, messed up the win condition is what it felt like. Okay, but was he actually, like, checkmated? Like, if you just execute the option, does he have any counterplay? Uh, he was recovering from side B. I just needed to hit him one more time, and he was dead. Okay. And what happened? Uh, I didn't calculate where his, he would end up from his side B, and so I just didn't hit him before he was actionable. Oh, okay. So, to me, like, the thing about win conditions is that, like, while they are powerful, and they're, like, what we play towards, not all of them are created equal. Like, we both know, like, wobbling, for example. Wobbling is, like, one hell of a win condition. Um, similarly, like, juggle, like, edge guarding somebody with, like, edge guarding Samus with Peach is absolutely a win condition, but we both kind of know that that's, like, a pretty variable interaction. Like, there's a lot, there's still, like, a give and take from both characters, right? Yeah. So, I think that just because we get to the, like, our goal state, like, the goal that, like, the goal, um, that our character is working towards in that particular stock, um... Yeah, like, it's easy for us to be like, yeah, I got him to the spot, like, it was over, but, no, like, not always, like, and I think Mm -hmm. that, I think we need to keep that in mind, because it's a good way for us to, I think if we accept that, it feels weird to accept it, because it feels like we're, like, removing some of our power, but the, Mm -hmm. we're not actually, we're not actually doing that, what we're doing is we're giving ourselves more power, because we're looking at the situation for what it is. The worst, where we lose our power is when we, like, start to look at the situation as something that it's not. And that includes that, you know, going over the, this should have happened. Because in that moment, we're not focus we're not looking at the opponent. And then we start making decisions, like, running into Falco and trying to, like, force trade um, when he's at high percent. And then he just keeps picking us apart for that. 
Um, because that that I, I would I, from what you've described, like I didn't see the game, but would you say that might have happened once or twice? Yeah. Yeah, because like, this is a good Falco player. Like he, you said he got upset. Is he power ranked? No, but he did. What's really funny is like, so there is a there is a biweekly on Friday, and then there's the weekly that's in my local area on Monday. Uh, he went to both of those, and the one on Monday, he actually beat um, Zimberfizz, our number seven PR'd player. Oh, the um, Santa Slayer. Five. Yeah, so he's like, he's a very interesting player, um, the Falco, because he like, his his valleys and peaks are very, like, very varied. <laughs> like, he can beat some really good players, and he can also just lose to, like, anybody, you know? He's it's kind of wild. He's gonna go to like his first major, beat Bobby Big Balls, and then lose to like, co and then not nah, lose to like some random like O tours young link and losers. <laughs> it's just it'll it'll be like the weirdest bracket of all time. Um, oh, yeah. I yeah no I I I hear you on that I hear you on that because yeah that's kind of the nature of a glass cannon character, but yeah that's still like very extreme to me. I wonder if he has like. When I think about something like that, I almost wonder if he makes an if he makes like a guess about what his opponent's gonna do before the set, and then like just plays to that the entire like just plays heavily into that, and then yeah, it it's one of those like if he if he if you line up with what he's anticipating, he just like body bags you, but if you if you don't, then that's why he can lose because then that like glass can. I wonder what his how new is he? Oh, he's been playing the game for a long time. <laughs> okay. He's, so. he's been playing for like eight years or mm. so. Okay, so it's probably not something like that. But I feel like a lot of a, a lot of uh, newer players use those kinds of strategies, um, especially on characters like Falco, just because it's a good way of like, um, it's good. It's good expected value if you're right. It's gambling, but like gambling sometimes works. Um, not that I'd recommend it, but me. Eh. Oh, I also just, I just remembered that today is actually exactly 11 years after I started playing Melee, so that's kind of cool. Oh, happy anniversary. Yippee. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know 11 doesn't really make much of a difference from 10, but like, you know, eh, today's the day. I just happen to remember. I mean, you know what? It's, I, each year, you know, I feel like our time with it is like meaningful in its own way. It is what it is. I just for find real. I found it funny when like because Rick and I have been together for probably about like nine eight uh eight eight and a half, um but I've been I've played melee since oh six so I just I've told him like quite frankly that he's the other uh he's the other game, but uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh were any of these matches recorded by chance? No, that's the unfortunate thing. These are both off stream, so it's like. That was another part of my frustration is that like I, I it felt like I went to it almost for nothing because not only did I like not do anything like I felt like I played decently like like well enough to where I'd, I wasn't like too mad about me just playing like garbage or anything but at the same time it's like I really wish either one of those sets were like on stream or recorded or something but no they were just on some setups elsewhere in the the room okay well you know what you said that you have trouble with space so let's do let's let's start there so we have Gan we have dreamland here because we're gonna have to presumably beat box some of the time on this stage on the stage or falco or yeah. falco or falco yeah so let's talk actually you know what yeah let's do the spaces together so generally speaking you're gonna be purple because you're cannibore so you're here and you're very tall and you have boots so where and big arms, yeah. So, where do you usually want to be on this level relative to Fox? Like, let's say that you're. Are you in center stage? Are you under side platform? Like, where where do you want to be generally? Honestly, I feel like I like. I feel more comfortable being kind of under, or around the side platforms, not like directly in center, because then, like, do you see how far away the side platforms are from from you, like? When you're directly in center, you have to run like pretty far to get mm -hmm. to a side platform. And I like using the side platforms as a way to get around Fox or or play like a mix up 
using my movement with Fox. So, I mean, kind of where he's at right there is a pretty good, like, spot. You know, I, I think anywhere, like, kind of underneath a side platform is, like, the most comfortable position. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so when I think about, like, stages like Dreamland and Battlefield and Yoshi's, like, any triplat stage, um, really, I kind of think about, like, a few things. The first one is, like, the, you have the bo this first section in the middle is what I consider the box. Um, mm -hmm. The box is just kind of, like, where we control center stage from, but it's not the only position. Like, you also have this one up here for the top platform. You have the ones on the side platforms. I find side platforms are interesting because I think that there's kind of, like, two... Like, a lot of times people just draw a box, like, kind of, like, organize them with a box underneath it, but I don't actually think that makes a ton of sense. I think that there's, like, kind of two boxes. It's just... Like, they're just kind of, like, sharing a, same, a similar dimension. They overlap. Yeah, exactly. So, I would consider... So, if, would you say that this space that I'm drawing here is, like, a good spot for Ganon to be in relation to the side plaid, generally? I'll shade it in so you'll know which one I mean, but let's say we did this. So, anything in here. Is this generally good for you? Cause yeah. You're, yeah, because you're still ca capable of accessing the side platform. Um, yes. And can work in this kind of, like, area. You can still influence up here. It's just this space over here that's, like, a problem. But we can get to that. Um, yeah. And then defensively. You defensively will do with blue, because that's the worst. I'm not creative today. Um, defensively, we can kind of operate in this kind of territory. Because this is where we'd go mm -hmm. if we're, like, hiding. Because this also protects us versus, like, foxes, like, full hop mares and stuff. Um, what about top plot? I don't know. I don't really use I don't really use top plot all that much. But what do you think about it? I mean, I, it's a little bit difficult to go from, like, not a side platform to top plot. Because, like, it's kind of slow and it's a big commitment. It's not like, you know, Falco has you know, just mad hops and he can just full hop up there easily. You know, it'd be cool if Ganon had something like that because having easy access to the top platform, I feel like can be pretty nice. But because on both like Battlefield and Dreamland, getting to top platform is like a significantly concentrated effort for me to do. It just feels kind of awkward for me to be like directly in center. And it's it feels more fluid for me to be under a platform because then i can like wave land off that platform double jump get to top plat pretty easily hmm. does your full hop up here hit the top platform or no it does yes okay well uh so if we use that as like one of our main like poking thing like if he goes up here if we just like can we vary the timing on our top on our full hop up here if we want to like hit him up here like, do we have to do it, like, immediately or, like, at the peak it, of our jump? It, it's pretty small. Um, obviously, you can do, like, a double jump mix-up. But if you're if you're just doing a full hop up air, yeah, the window's kind of small because it is still pretty high up. Okay. And your full hop goes, like, what? Like, to here? Uh, a little higher. Right here. Yeah. Okay. That's good to know. So this will be the purple one. So... One thing about the th about this stage, I think, is that if we're going to control center stage, I think that we have to be willing to use our full hop, like, at least some of the time, and not mm -hmm. rely so much on the double jump mix-ups. So I think that's, okay. like, I think that's one starting point. I still think, generally speaking, um, the green box is, like, kind of the better one for us. Um, but I think that if he's, like, the one problem with the green box is if, like, Falco's playing over here like, on this side of the top plat, then, like, and just isn't coming towards us, I think we do have to use, like, the full hop stuff over here some of the time. Because having to run all the way over here is just, it's too much, like, it limits us in a different way, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so, I it's not like a don't ever do it, but it's more of a, like, we need a more complete system, because if we're just running all the way from, like, here, all the way over here, just to, like, be functional, and we're leaving, like, all this open, then, yeah, that's too much, that takes too much, uh, pressure off him so right yeah i think what might also make so when you full hop up air like and you come up here and then your leg swings up to hit him what is what does he do usually uh shield hmm interesting so how do we feel about like could you can you double jump onto the top platform from here um 
after an up air, no, but after a back air, yes, if it's frame perfect. And, oh, I just mean full hop, double jump up. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, you can. Can you nil? Yes. Well, could we, like, use full hop to, like, threaten the up air and then just double jump up? Because he spins during both. The Like, we have to get the spinning animation for it, like the forward one, I think. Um, but yeah. we could then maybe, like, nil grab? I think so. I feel like that's kind of reactable, but it's it's in that weird gray area where it feels like it could be a mix-up, but also could be reactable. I'm not super sure. Okay, so what would his, like, counter to the nil grab be? It would be, like, probably to, like, spot dodge or, like, shield drop or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, taco has got a lot of fast, good options from being on a platform, so, yeah. So what if, what if we, like, out of the nil, we, like, up aired instead? Like, we dropped back down with up air. The, that's a very specific mix-up, but that can work, yeah. Yeah, so, like, here's the thing. I'm thinking that we need to use our up air, like, what what we can get out of our up air seems, like, like important here to me. And the main reason why I think it's important is because it's the most direct option. It's the option that gives us like the most access, like the like something that works up here. It trades well. It has good disjoint, like so it beats his like moves up here, which is really important because that's kind of how we're getting him to shield. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. like if he if he double jumps, if he like sees us coming up with this up air and he double jumps away from it, or like if he jumps away from it, then we know like we don't have to do the up air, or we can just fastball to the ground. So like uh -huh. we're kind we're kind of like safe-ish um, against a lot of his like evasive options up here and because it covers so much space like he has to act like it kind of like helps check his escape routes here and here so mm -hmm. this is why the up air like the full hop up air in here appeals to me and why I think it could be a good thing to do like with in conjunction with like the green box because the green box gives us like more efficiency um, after we attack but like the up, that's one of the weaknesses of the up air. But I think without the up air giving us a direct push, uh, he can just like I feel like what he probably what the Falco probably did from the sounds of it, or the sorry the Fox probably did from the sounds of it, is he was probably here. He saw you coming up in the green box, then he moved this way. Yeah, that happens a lot. Yeah. So this gives you counterplay to that. Hmm. Which is why which is why I think it's important. The other thing here is if your double jump reaches up here. It's really the double, like, really what the up air is doing is it's giving your double jump life here. Because once okay. you, once you can double jump, like, you, you, like, let's, let's think about this. Once you can double jump up here, like, let's say you know you can come up to here and double jump up to the platform and he's going to shield or, like, run away from you. Well, now you have a lot of options, right? Because if you can double jump up here, you have grab, you have wave land, you have, like, like, fall through platform. I mean, no impact land. Yeah, you're actionable pretty soon. Yeah, you're immediately actionable once you touch the platform, so you can just do, like, you have everything. You have all your cards. And heck, if you wanted to from here, if you know he's blocking when you come up, it's gimmicky, but, like, there's nothing wrong with giving him a hug. Like <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've been doing a lot more up Bs when I can, like, tell my opponent is gonna shield in a spot like they have been. Like, I've been hitting him, like, a lot more, even, even at, like, lower percents, so I've been up being a lot more which has been feeling kind of it's kind of fun to hit yeah well and i mean like it's pretty good like seven like as long as they get knocked like as long as we put them into knockdown like what do we care right um right because like it's 17 damage it's 17 damage that we got they like 17 damage is 17 damage is 17 damage and yeah if he's shielding here like why wouldn't we right if we know he's right. just, if we know he's just gonna sit here and shield waiting for the shield drop then like why not just take it so I think that this makes a lot of sense. I think that this kind of system works well with what you're currently doing because, yeah, like if you come up here, if you jump at like an arc, like if you're jumping at this kind of arc like this um, for the up air and then you reach this platform, you know, you have like tricks that you can then do. Um, it's also really good for chasing him because like if, he's, if he, the opponent is starting on this side and they see you coming like this way, like from like in this direction well if you jump here or like in any spot really where you can then access the other green box then you have like you know the option to like threaten from this side using your double jump like this way or you can just let the arc of your um full hop like finish you know end with you here 
and then you have the green boxes option and the stuff up there. So you just kind of give yourselves like a convergence point here. Like at the, as you're like a convergence point here to like do different things. It's probably like more like up here, but you see what I mean. Mm -hmm. It's just something that you can actually like do. Um, right. Like it's a thing where you're not stuck playing one, like one direction or one like p position. You have access to two now, which is really, really good. And even then this double jump is useful because it lets you change directions and up air this way. Right. Yeah, so you have like kind of like two key directions to work with because you have everything over here and then double jump, like letting the natural trajectory go this way and hitting up here or double jumping that way. Like you just have more stuff going on and I think that's really what you need um, against these runaway styles because you need them to not feel comfortable um, moving in a certain direction. And the only way we do that is test them to see what their movement pattern is good against and bad against. Hmm does make me want to try to full hop up air top platform more if they go up that way. Yeah. So, how do you think, do you, what's your level of confidence with like, from seeing this and like kind of see, like examining how it's like, taking in how it's like laid out, um, what are your thoughts? Like, do you think this is something that you'd feel confident trying? Um, yeah. Yeah, I can try that. Yeah. Want to give it a whirl on some ranked? Or unranked. Or sure. unranked, sure, whatever, it's all good. Um, so I'm gonna stop streaming and you'll stream to me. And yeah, so let me get Slippy up. Uh, this'll, this'll work versus other characters too, like Peach and stuff, by the way. Cause like, if anyone who goes to top platform as like a real plan um, at any point during the match, um, yeah, this kind of system will work against as well. So it's not just like a Fox exclusive. Hold. I believe I am broadcasting to you. Yep, yeah, I'm just going in now. Uh, refresh. There we go. Okay. Oh, a puff. Oh, there's no platforms. Well, <laughs> it's fine. Oh, we need to know this one. So, okay. So, versus Jigglypuff. How do you feel about this one? Um, I do actually like fighting Puff because it's a very spacing matchup and it's like it's very very whoever holds center better is typically the one that's going to win. Hmm. Plus, I also just like the fact that I get grabs and I can just kill her like that. Oh, she's not dead. <laughs> she had amazing DI. That was, like, actually crazy yeah. DI. How do you feel about up air, like, using the um, hitbox, like, in front of you? Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of tricky with Puff because she can weave in and out of that range pretty easily. But, mm. like, yeah, if, if I have, like, a read on, like, what she's trying to do, then, like, up air is pretty good at coming out quickly. Like, it beats her bear because her bear's kind of slow. Yeah, so I'm thinking, like, we, we could do it like how Marth's kind of do it in the matchup, where they, like, hang outside of her bear range, and then, like, they short hop, and if they see her do the back air, then they just kind of swing. Or if they think that she's going to do the back air, then they swing. So they're kind of like, yeah. it's like delay Marth bear, and you're hitting her foot. You're not actually hitting her, like, center mass. It's kind of like how Falcons do the, um, how Falcons do their, uh, the, like, the low up air ones. Dang, I thought you were, I thought you were gonna hug her. Goodbye. Pitman Spike, let's go. <laughs> Does oh, anyone gosh, still call dude. it that, or is, like... Uh, people actually still do. That's awesome. Yeah. Ah, uh, CC F smash. Let's go. Oop. What's the stomp there for? Uh, in case she like really moves in. I don't know. It like. 
You, you, you knock her onto the ground, and it's like a tech chase scenario almost. True. Oh, the fall, the no fast fall mix up. That was actually really, really smart. I. Oh, never mind. Hold on. Like uh. that. Oh, I was actually thinking like doing it while you're falling. Like delay it and do it like fast fall. Oh. Ooh. This pup's DI has been very good. Oh, that poked. Damn. <laughs> oh. They are not going back in. Oh, never mind. They are. Okay. Now we're on a top platform map. It's definitely different for Puff, though. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know what he's doing. All right. He's gone. Okay. So, it's, uh, so, so but what, what does Puff, top, Puff do on top plat? I don't know. She's not really a threat up there. <laughs> Uh, is this an AFK Pikachu? Okay, that's an AFK Pikachu. Let's find someone else. Is this really the state of unranked as we find it? Um, this, these, are the, these are the first non-spacies I've played today. <laughs> okay, Falcon on FD again. <laughs> Fine, whatever. You know what? This is as good as it's going to get, I think. And that's Probably. okay. That better. Oh. Nice. Shuffle up there. <laughs> okay, we'll just do that three times in a row. Yeah. Ah, okay. So he's just kind of waiting for us to swing. Yeah. Ooh, I like the, how you got behind him. Ooh, that was sick. Yo, let's go. Tomahawk jab. Oh, that was a good drift. I think you just up air there and cover like that whole space, but I get that I get that why we like the temptation. I I say why like you could definitely make the back air work. I just saw like right. it just looked like up air was like super easy to hit, but I don't know. Maybe it doesn't kill though. Like maybe you have to do another one. Yeah. Oh, I'm dead because I double jumped into Nair. Yeah. All right. He donated a back air to us. <laughs> I, I so that second up air. Like what I'm thinking is, if, well, what if we just do that out of short hop? Like where you like fall? Like where you like do the up air after you've started falling? And kind of like, uh oh, it makes me like a little sooner because I feel like there's like a pretty good mix up there with like whether we do it early or hot, early or late, and it kind of like has a little more, it feels like it has good range in front of him. 
And we're not committing in our like short hop as early as much either, which is kind of nice. It's kind of like plays to how people usually wait for Ganon to like swing. So if we're like doing our up air late, you see what I mean? Like we wind up empty jumping more or like just doing delayed aerial more, which are both like really good on offense. Oh my okay. God, what the heck is this guy doing? Well, all right, let's get off of FB. Oh, he is done. All right. In before I get a Sheik on FD. Honestly, no. Okay, like... I get Falco on Dream Lab. Finally. So he's not really using top platform, but give him time. <laughs> he'll get comboed by a stomp and then he'll he'll then he'll do it yeah see like like that cover like i feel like if we had fared that doesn't like hit that spot as well or same with like back like if we turned in back aired it's definitely a mix-up because like typically people kind of expect the arc or like the wind up of forward air yeah so like if they're expecting the wind up of fair then we just get like low aerial on shield initiation which is like totally fine like low spaced right. aerial on shield is Ganon. Yeah, like, we're quite happy with that. And the nice thing is, is because we, like, are committing kind of late in our jump, like, if we want to double jump for a stomp, if we decide that, like, we want to double jump for up air, if we want to, like, just change gears completely in Waveland, like, and for repositioning, like, we all, we can do all those things. Oh. too slow. Hmm. Okay, we got the up air. Oh, uh, that was really good delayed angle. You don't delay an angle, you just go high enough. Yeah, I'm not... Oh my god, yo! <laughs> That combo? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Good old spot dodge sign. Never gets old. Ugh. Okay. Wow, Jesus. Good eye. Oh, dang it, because I started to roll. It's okay. See, he went to top plat. I know, but we're not really, like, we're not really in... Yo, he did, yes. We. So then what do we do about that? This is, like, this is what we... This is what the, the whole game plan was for. Oh, nice. I love that finish. That finish makes so much sense. Yeah, but, like, if they DI away on the up throw, I get basically nothing. Aww. Oh, unfortunate. I didn't DI the down smash. It's okay. I think... Oh, boy. D again. 
I think that that I think that that game went pretty well in terms of like getting to see where like some spots where it could be useful. I think that we over I overestimated like how high Ganon's full hop goes, but it's okay. Not every system is perfect, but it just means that like yeah, we'll just have to probably modify the plan a little bit to account for new information. A bit, yeah. But it was I I like I was paying attention to the getting the top flap stuff, so. Mm hmm. Oh, that is. You know that timing. Oh, that is a bad bird. Yep. I noticed you're doing more moves in general. Like, I also noticed, like, against Kayo. Um, like, sorry, against Kayo. Like, um. You had like some down, like some side Bs in like your early pressure that like looked pretty interesting because you hit his shield and like then you were safe after. And I was like, right. oh, that's pretty cool. I think I can grab. Nice. I think jab would have worked, but yeah, the forward tilt I think was, um, oh wow, you've tricked him again. Oh, come on. Jumping out of shield, I swear, is the hardest thing in this game. Hmm. When, when, when your shield gets a hit, just try and do anything out of shield. Uh, I used, I, I definitely feel that, I definitely felt that way for a long time. What helped me was, like, just kind of understanding there are cues. So, like, when your shield gets hit by an attack that does, I think, like, 11-ish, or, like, 10, 11, 12, something like that, or more, um, the shield disappears. Like, it flickers and comes back. And on, on weak moves, like Falco's laser, anything that's, like, under that, there's kind of, like, TV static. Um, uh oh. Yeah, so there's kind of, like, different animations for shield stun that you can use as a reference point. Oh, later. Oh, wow, that was really well timed. Oh. That up here out of shield was really smart. Yeah. Because, oh, yeah, because was... he's, he's been very consistent about, like, delay aerial and stuff. So, like, yeah, that was a really, that was a good call out. Nice. I saw that your your out of shield timing on that last one was good. Yeah, I have to like really focus on that. Do you have to focus on it? What if we just trusted ourselves? To do. Just to do the out of shield timing. Now that we know that there's like a cue. Oh, right. The Q. Yeah, like, we don't have to, like, necessarily look for it. We just, we know it's there. We'll trust our hands to adjust and account for it now that we've seen it. Right. Oh. Not that too early. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm liking, I'm liking these up airs. These up airs look sick. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> oh. 
I'm noticing you're like you you look more comfortable in center stage. Oh. Let's see. Oh. Get away. Ooh. Yeah, okay. He waited. Get tech from him. Oh. Sometimes it just works. Like it's just wild. Like the up air just will just send him at this awful angle. Ah uh, yes. It's amazing how consistent that works. Which one? The th F throw me off stage, and then just you know. Honestly, I think his forward throw is his best throw. I think his forward throw is, like, really underrated. And I can see how, like, if you're not DI'ing, like, if you don't survival DI for the Gimp, like, how it's, like, really difficult to get back. Oh, I'm on the ground. Ow. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> let's play one more with him, and then let's, uh, take a look at, uh... Let's just go to, like, the training lab for just 10 seconds. I want to see something about, like, the, uh, the, sis the up here system. This is how, I, this is how, um, like, I usually do a lot of stuff. And how I recommend characters who play, like, characters, people who play characters that, like, don't have, like, tons and tons and tons of a player base. Like, basically, if you don't play a top tier, um, or if that top tier happens to be Jigglypuff, um, I think that it's, like, when being able to come up with, like, spatial representations of the stage to come up with like so that you can create solutions and then test them um is very important and yeah i'm just curious as to like what the window for hitting that full hop up air on the top platform actually is so because yeah i, I think right. it, i think that this is a good plan like a good starting point it's just i think that we need to make like maybe one or two small changes to how we do the top platform on the big stages and then it's basically good like it's a good first draft at that point right Oh, I thought we had him. I'm glad to like walk a bit first. I get so excited while you know, seeing that fair. Oh. No, Galen. How easy is it to get Galint with him? It's not. <laughs> Do you think that maybe we should just go to a different part of the level then, like for between stocks? Like, what if we like sh light shield it on side flat or something? That can work, yeah. Like, it's probably better than like no Galint ledge dash, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Now let's just do so. Let's take a quick look. See at um, you're gonna have to actually stream to me if we're gonna go into training mode. Cause yeah, uh, yeah. Let me do that. Sure. Oh, that's the wrong training mode. Whoops. Hold on. It's all good. Can it exit, please? Thank you. All right. Uh. Okay, yeah, let's we're just gonna go to we're just gonna go to Dreamland basically. Um So yeah, we'll put the ICs on the top platform. I love that you know how to do this. Having to explain this is always like so painful. Um Okay, perfect. And now let's full hop up here and see how long it and see what it's like. Okay, so you can do it while go. You can do it at the peak of your jump, and then you can do it like while going up, kinda, but not really. Yeah. 
Okay, so what what can you can you actually reach the top platform with double jump? Like with a double jump and land on it? Okay, you can. Cool. Yeah. So Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So I think so the way I'm envisioning the up airs uh, to catch him when he's up there it, as working is we do them at the we do them while we're going up slightly or at the peak of our double jump. No, sorry, already at the peak of our full hop. And then in either case, we fast fall and get get out of there. So we don't want to like we don't want to like hang out there lo longer than we need to. See how efficient that is? Like, yeah. So then and the, auto cancels too. Yeah. So like the idea is that if we hit him and we poke his shield, if like if we poke the the corner of his shield, if we hit him, like if we trade or whatever, like we're getting back to the ground like asap. So then we're right. able to like follow up on him because we can hit him onto the side platform a lot of the time. And then I think that the the mix up is just double jumping up there. Or double jumping in a different direction to cover a different area. Like if we double jump, if we jump forward and double jump back, we can up air him if he goes the other way. Right. You could also probably, honestly, do like an edge cancel with that, and that would be pretty. That would actually probably be pretty good. Like that doesn't seem bad. What do you think? Yeah. Like it, it, it takes. Seems it, like it could do something. Well, it's just like another way to attack him up there. That's like somewhat efficient. After that weird, the platform cancel, like the um platform contortion, is really weird. And I guess that's because of the nil. So I don't know if that's like going to be like consistent enough. But I think that there's like, yeah, this is kind of the system that I'm thinking of. And you can see how much space we're covering by like moving here, right? Because if he moves uh, to yeah. side platform, we can just like we can just not up air. We can just fair instead, or we can just fast fall and then like, like if he goes from top platform to side platform, we can like fair instead. We can fast fall and do the up air like at a delayed timing. Like it's we're just we have so much more flexibility compared to like just you know by having this position because now we can kind of chase him towards the side plats where we have more of our like efficiency tricks. Um, right and push him into that spot instead of just being like, please come over here. Um, so we're just have another way to steer him. Does that make more sense or do you see? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay. Cause yeah, I thought I'm honestly, I, his, it's interesting. His full hop is a lot smaller than I thought it was, but his up air is also like twice as big as I thought it was. <laughs> so it's kind <laughs> yeah. of, they're kind of compensating for each other. Um, yeah. Because I thought this was system wasn't gonna work when I was watching the games, but like no, it's just a, it's just a timing thing. And I guess this is more strict on Battlefield because Battlefield's top platform is slightly higher. But like it, yep. everything should basically work the way it is. Maybe we can't do the double jump up your edge cancel, but like it's like I don't know about Battlefield that with Battlefield, but like this all of this seems pretty cool. Um, and I think that there should be a way to pin Fox and Falco with this, like, somewhat reliably. Because this actually feels like you have, like, a good amount of, like, threat and a good amount of range. And, like, they have to actually make a decision when you come up now. Um, right, yeah. Whereas before, it was just kind of like, yeah, just, like, run to the other side. Then just, like, make sure that we're not, like, fighting in, like, the, in your strong area, basically. But now you have, like, the strong area in the middle. Um, so... How are you feeling about today's session? I know that it was a lot more conceptual, but like, yeah, we we didn't really do as much with mindset, but yeah, overall, how are you feeling? Um, I mean, it's definitely there's a lot I can like work off of with what we talked about. Like, it definitely makes me want to try to think more about how to like defend top plat and and like utilizing my space on the stage, especially for the bigger stages like you know Dreamland and Pokemon and FD to a degree because like i think i got it down pretty well for the smaller ones like battlefield yoshis and fountain like i'm actually getting more comfortable in fountain than i used to not be but i think the more that i'm playing on it the more i'm getting used to it and it's it's actually pretty good for ganon um but yeah the bigger ones is like i think conceptually i still need to work on them more and i think this certainly helps yeah, like, I'm thinking, the other thing that I think will help you a lot is really, like, that using the up air when you're in a front-facing position more. Because, like, with the rising up air, like, the fast, like, the um, delayed up air, like, the delayed fast fall up air, like, I think that that, those two things give you, like, a lot of, um, they let you play a lot more loosely when you're, when you're, like, in front of, when you're um, facing someone. Because if you were just doing fair every time, then, like, fair has so much wind-up, we can't really, like, do as many, like, timing mix-ups with it. 
we have to commit very early in our jump with it but this just gives us more ways of like playing those very very important spot like a very very important stance so i think that the between those two things i think you're actually going to probably solve some of the mindset stuff yourself and i'm i'll tell you why mm. i think a lot of the mindset stuff is easy you know it comes about from us not knowing what to do and getting frustrated by that because it, that that not knowing what to do i think has a compounding factor on right, yeah. on everything else so i think that just by like having a better idea of like what the game offers us and what solutions might be available we kind of naturally it kind of encourages us to be like more curious and less set about what should have happened or what needed to happen because we know that there's like a lot of things in this game that we don't know about like there's things we right. as a player are not aware of and i think because we're finding new things right so i think it helps us kind of keep that openness just naturally um mm -hmm. and yeah i think that i personally find it very rewarding maybe you don't but like i yeah i i find it's one of the best forms of insulation against the frustrations yeah yeah definitely uh it definitely helps to be like it, it feels like a double-edged sword at times because it feels like if I'm, I'm really confident that i know like x thing can happen from this thing then like that can make me play better but also like now my expectations are also this sort of level so when something doesn't happen and i thought it would it's like i have to think more like okay what exactly went wrong there like where did i think incorrectly why does it necessarily have to be that we're wrong though like just because something bad happened or something that we didn't like happened doesn't mean that necessarily our play was bad like for all we know the opponent messed up their input right yeah i mean i guess just like you know when i think like oh this this stomp didn't quite hit at all and it's like okay but like is there something that i didn't think about that made me miss it or like executionally or because sometimes it's like i can pinpoint what went wrong like immediately and then sometimes i'm just like okay i don't know what happened so in the, in the case of the second one what if we just took a what if we just d made a commitment to ourselves that in the case that we don't know what happened uh i will look into this later yeah yeah it's definitely sometimes i just like i just need to go back and like look at what happened in the slippy vod and just figure it out yeah and like if we're getting if we're building if we're creating a habit of when we don't know how to beat a situation or how to beat a specific character or whatever it is um we're gonna like we're gonna explore options we're gonna investigate it we're gonna then try our things if we start building that into a habit then i think it's probably gonna be really easy for you mm -hmm. um to then go i don't know what happened here but that's okay i'll figure it out later right yeah and that will also provide you because that also takes the pressure off you in tournament because what we are doing is we're making we're not i feel like the problem with sometimes being like just be positive is that there's no solution and our brain knows that um mm -hmm. but by making a commitment that to ourselves that like you know if something's really bugging us we'll look at it we'll like look into it we'll explore it even if it's not really bugging us even if we just want to play that spot better like when it knows that that is going to happen or that that is likely to happen it's much more willing to accept the we'll figure it out later as an actual solution because it knows it's coming right yeah so can i count on you to at least look at some of these you know some of these problems as they arise with like a little bit more curiosity some curiosity and just like in explore solutions yeah yeah I, I can definitely try to just be more curious about those things when they come up good because that's really what's going to take you to that next because you felt really good when you got seventh right like because you, you bumped up two spots from your ninth oh yeah 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 that felt yeah it felt validating to go up on a power ranking and even if it's just within the city it still feels good yeah so if you want number to go up this is sometimes involved in that process not saying it's True, always yeah. but it is a part of it so uh yeah it's a good skill to, whether you decide you want to <laughs> pursue that or not it's a good skill to have anyway so i'm gonna let you go mm -hmm. But we'll talk again soon. Sound good? Yep, sounds good. Maybe I'll bump into you on ranked. I'm going to start playing that again. <laughs> <laughs> Word. I mean, the new ranked season starts next Sunday or Monday, so might bump into you then. I mean, what are what what are you playing at? Like, what's your rank right now? Um. I